Hello, welcome back to another YouTube video by Austin of austinsnerdythings.com. This is episode two, how to set up a Raspberry Pi from downloading the OS through enabling SSH and Wi-Fi at first boot. The result will be a Raspberry Pi that is ready for use for any project around the house. In this case, I will be using this to host the Linux service to handle data coming from my new ambient weather weather station. So what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 3. <coughs> Model B, you can see right here. Um, this has been a workhorse for many of my projects around the house. I have three of these, uh, as well as another single board computer. Uh, but I do like the Raspberry Pi infrastructure and ecosystem the best. Uh, there are many supported applications and OSs, uh, and the support, you know, things just work with Raspberry Pi. So I like that about it the most. Um, also, have here a new 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Um, I got two of these for use in these videos. Um, I also got a brand new laptop over here for use with the blog. Um, and so with these micro SD cards came an adapter. So this right here is a SD size and I will be taking the micro SD card and plugging it into the adapter. And my new laptop over here has a port for the SD card. Um, so I will be go ahead and inserting this into here so we can flash the operating system onto the micro SD card. Alright, and so with that I will be moving over to the computer. Where you can probably hear me a little bit better because the microphone is right here. So what we are going to do is navigate to the raspberrypi.org site. And you can see uh, I've got the links here because I've been here a couple times already. So i um, going to go with software um, because we need everything you need to get started with your Raspberry Pi computer. So we need the Raspberry Pi OS. Um, and so this brings us to raspberrypi.org slash software slash operating systems. Um, and we see here there is a list of three different options. Um, the first one is Raspberry Pi OS with desktop and recommended software. With desktop means it includes things um, for a GUI, you know, which is the standard, here's your desktop, uh, you can use your keyboard and your mouse with it. Recommended software uh, typically includes office productivity apps and other things of that nature. Raspberry Pi OS with desktop does not include the office applications and things like that. And you can see the corresponding size decrease. Down here we're at 1100 megabytes um, and the one with the recommended software is 2800. And the third option is the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which is only 442 megabytes. This does not include the desktop, the, um, nor does it include the office, but that's okay. We will not be using our Raspberry Pi as a desktop, so we don't need the extra stuff that comes with it. Um, since this is a smaller file, it'll download faster and uh, won't take up as much space on our SD card. So this is meant for headless installs. Uh, you might hear headless thrown around here and there. It means no keyboard, no mouse, no monitor. Uh, typically it means just a network connection and power. So we are going to download Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Okay, so our download has completed. Um, we will open it up in the download folder here. Uh, you can see that this is the second time I downloaded this. Uh, all my editing from yesterday was lost in because it was not autosaved. So anyways, um, double click the .zip file and you will see inside of it is this .img, which is a disk image file. Uh, so here we can see the date of the release, Raspi OS, Buster is the release version, ARM is the processor type, and this is the Lite OS. Um, and th in this instance, you know, zipping this file up really will be saving the Raspberry Pi uh, Foundation a lot of bandwidth because the compressed size is only 452 megabytes, um, and the actual extracted size will be uh, 1822 megabytes. So uh, with that, we will be extracting it. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to drag it onto the desktop here. And I'm going to click replace because I already have the file, but you should not have that prompt if you have not already extracted this file. Okay, so with the file extracted, we have the Raspberry Pi image on our desktop right here. Uh, and we will be using a program called Bellina Etcher to go ahead and flash this operating system onto our micro SD card. So I'm going to double click on Belina Etcher and it pops up with a pretty straightforward prompt. Um, we will be flashing from file. I've never used flash from URL or clone drive, uh, but the file we have or we need to use is right here. So 
So I'm going to click flash from file. Uh, and we're at our desktop. This is the file that we've been looking at. Uh, select target. This is where you are flashing it to. Uh, so this is the SD card we just plugged in. It says it's 32 gigabytes on the label. You know, disks are always a little bit smaller than advertised. So this is the correct image. And then we are going to hit select. So now we have our image selected. We have our target selected. And now we click flash. And so I just clicked yes on Windows UAC prompt and it will start the flashing process here. Okay, so it is done flashing and now it validates. This just reads the image back from the SD card and compares it with the file that we told it to write to make sure that there are no bad blocks and everything was flashed successfully. Okay, so with that done, um, it says in the background here behind this prompt that the flash was complete. Um, and one successful target. So we are done with that. Um, what Windows popped up is that you need to format this disk in JV before you can use it. Uh, Windows basically doesn't recognize this partition because it's a Linux file system. Uh, so do not format the disk, just click cancel uh, because Windows doesn't know what to do with it. So Bellina Etcher by default does eject the disk after a successful flash, uh, which means that we need to take the disk out um, and reinsert it so that Windows will recognize it again. Okay, so this prompt comes up again. Do you need to format the disk? Do not do that. Click cancel. Uh, we can close out of this as well. Uh, I'm not sure why it popped up a third time. Okay, so what we need to do now is enable SSH and Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi. And to do that, we'll be placing two files in the boot folder of the SD card that we just flashed. So we can see here, there are the two partitions on the SD card. Uh, e is the one that Windows kept prompting us about. That is the Linux file system. Windows doesn't know what to do with it. Um, that's fine. Boot is readable by Windows. Um, and this is will, where we will be putting those files. So you can see boot here does contain um, you know, a number of files that are needed to get the Raspberry Pi kernel booted. Um, one thing I do need to show you guys is um, I have this file name extension box checked because we need to see the extensions here. Um, so if you uncheck that, text files and other files recognized by Windows will lose their extension. So this command line, CMD line, uh, that's that's it. Uh, but when we check this box, um, we will see that it is actually command line.txt. So let's go to Raspberry Pi SSH. Um, so I already have uh, this up here. I will be putting these links in the description. All right, so we're going to scroll down to enable SSH on a headless Raspberry Pi. Uh, and so to do this, it says SSH can be enabled by placing a file named SSH without any extension, which is what we just covered, onto the boot partition of the SD card from another computer. And so when the Pi boots, it looks for the SSH file. Uh, if it is found, SSH is enabled and the file is deleted. The content of the file does not matter. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so with that, we will uh, right click here in the boot partition, go to new text document. We'll be naming it SSH, and I'm gonna hit the delete key four times to get rid of the extension, enter, uh, and then just click yes on this file name extension. Um, you know, it says the file might become unusable, but that's fine, there's nothing in the file, we don't care if it becomes unusable, because it will be usable by the Raspberry Pi. All right, so next up, we will be configuring Wi-Fi. Uh, and here is the link for that, which I'll be putting in the description, uh, raspberrypi.org slash documentation slash configuration slash wireless slash headless dot MD. Uh, and so this says you will need to define a file called WPA underscore supplicant dot conf file for your particular wireless network. Put this file in the boot folder. And when the Pi first boots, it'll copy the file into the correct location in the Linux root file system. Uh, after the Pi is connected, make sure to wait a few minutes for it to boot up and register on the network. It'll be named wpasupplicant.conf, and here are the contents. So I'm going to copy these and go back over to my boot directory and create another new text document, wpa underscore supplicant.conf. And I'm going to hit delete the key a couple times to get rid of that .txt extension. Um, if you change the file extension, it might become unusable. That's fine. This is just a text file. So what we are going to do is click open with. Um, by default, Windows doesn't know what to do with the .conf files. And so um, you will have to click more apps, and then you will find Notepad. 
Um, it'll typically be down here if you have not done this before. But since I have, it's up here. And then check the box. Always use this app to open .conf files. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to paste in the contents of this file. Uh, the first two lines we don't need anything to do with. The country. It says insert two letter ISO country code here. US. So SSID. This is the name of your wireless LAN, uh, which means Wi-Fi. So we do Wi-Fi name here. And the PSK is the stands for pre-shared key. Uh, and so this would be the Wi-Fi password. Wi-Fi password here. And so now I will be deleting these placeholders and putting in my actual Wi-Fi information. All right, so with that, do file save. And so that has saved this file onto the boot partition. And so now we have SSH that will be enabled upon startup, as well as a WP supplicant, or sorry, WPA supplicant info. So with that, um, I'm going to eject the SSD or the micro SD card. So right click on the little USB looking thing and then eject uh, either one of these. It'll do both of them. All right, so it says the removable disk can now be safely removed from the computer. All right, so I will be removing the SD card from the computer. Let's see, taking it out of the adapter. And then I will be placing it in the Raspberry Pi. All right, so we have the SD card in here ready to go. Um, now we just need to apply power to it. All right, so we have two LEDs down here. The red one indicates the power is applied. There is a green one right above it that will flash when the SD card is being accessed, um, either reads or writes. So you can see here that it's flashing off and on a little bit. Um, so it is now doing its initial boot, uh, copying the Wi-Fi info and the SSH over. And so with that, we will go back to the computer to access it and get logged in for the first time. Okay, so I'm going to open up a command prompt here um, and I'm going to do ping raspberry pi, which is the default host name. Um, I don't have anything else on my network named raspberry pi, so this will find the raspberry pi. Um, and I hit enter. So, okay, so it's returning pings. That means it's already booted and connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, you, this IP address might look a little funky to you. This is IP version six. Um, there's a lot more addresses available, you know, in terms of one IP address for every grain of sand on planet Earth, and then some kind of a thing. Uh, so um, so this does mean that it was set up uh, and connected to the network. And to get connected to it for the first time, we will be using SSH. So to do that, SSH, the default username is pi. Uh, and then we do the at symbol, at raspberry pi. Hit enter. And so this will pop up the first time you connect to any host via SSH. It says the authenticity of the host can't be established. Um, the, here's the fingerprint. So uh, we could you know, plug the Pi into a monitor and look at what the fingerprint actually is, compare it, make sure they match. But we're just going to trust it. Uh, are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yes. Uh, that's it. Okay. So it says permanently added the Raspberry Pi to the list of known hosts. That's good. And the default password is Raspberry. All right, so with that, we are in. Um, so, you know, just real simple stuff. Uptime, we have been up for one minute. Here's the load averages. Um, typically, the first two things you want to do with a new Linux install, and Raspberry Pi is Linux, is update it. Um, so to do so, we will be using the sudo command, which is super user. This allows you to run programs as the root user, and root is the all-powerful user in Linux. So we will do sudo. Um, and the package manager is aptitude. So we'll, the shorthand for that is apt, sudo apt update. And this will update the packages. And so this is the first part of updates. Uh, the second part is actually upgrading the packages that it says can be upgrading. Um, but I, I'll show you the command to do that, but I won't actually do it because it does take up some time. Okay, so it says 22 packages can be upgraded, run apt list upgradable to see them. So we're gonna do sudo apt list upgradable to see them. All right, so here are the list of packages that can be upgraded. 
Uh, and so I'm going to show you what command you would use to upgrade. It'll be sudo apt upgrade. Um, and there will be a prompt here that I can say no to. So it says the following packages will be upgraded. It's the same list as these guys. Um, need to get 11.4 megabytes of archives. And then when everything is done and installed, uh, these upgraded files will only take you know, 1.5 megabytes of additional disk space. So uh, you would typically want to hit Y here and then enter, uh, which would upgrade, but it takes a couple minutes. So I'm just going to hit N for no and then enter and we are done. So um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, you know, we walked through getting the Raspberry Pi OS, the operating system, downloading it, um, flashing it to the SD card, and then enabling SSH and Wi-Fi on first boot, um, and then connecting to it and upgrading the package list. So um, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I will continue to put out more videos like this. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you found this uh, helpful, or uh, if you want to see more things like this in the future. So. Um, with that, we will catch you next time. Signing off, this is Austin from austinsnerdythings.com. Thanks for watching.